Hey everyone, we're back again with another video. In today's video, we're going to actually go over waves and we're going to go over some waves problems and show you how to ballpark or cross out possibly wrong answers so you can get a better chance or uh, understanding of getting the correct answer. So now let's go ahead and do some item analysis and start with this first problem. Number one, a student drew the diagram below to model an electromagnetic wave from the sun. So it says scientists have shown that ultraviolet light from the sun that has a wavelength of 315 to 400 nanometers can damage the retina. So if it has 315 to 400 nanometers, that means it has a very high frequency or it has a higher frequency. Which question is the best question for the student to ask to determine whether the electromagnetic wave model will cause damage to the retina? So I'm looking for something that 315 to 400 nanometers, that means it's going to have a high frequency. So I'll go ahead and put that there because remember, the higher the frequency, the more energy that it's carrying. And I'll go ahead and put this here. So high frequency is carrying more energy. So let's look at A. What is the vertical distance between point Y and point Z on the model? So we look at point Y and point Z. That's actually talking about the height of the wave. So we're talking, looking at the amplitude of the wave, but a wave that large is not going to be able to penetrate or damage the retina. So we can't be Y and Z. So we know it's not that one. Let's look at B. What is the vertical distance between point X and point Y on the model? Once again, anytime we're talking about vertical, that's not dealing with frequency. That's actually more or less dealing with amplitude. So we're not going to be looking for that as well because that's talking about amplitude with vertical. Now let's look at this. Look at C. What is the horizontal distance between W point W and point Z on the model? So if we look at point W and we look at point Z, if the further the distance, the less energy they're carrying, but the closer the distance, the more energy that they're carrying. So that means they're going to have a higher frequency and they're going to be carrying more energy and they could possibly damage the retina. So we're going to go ahead and put a circle around this one. And then let's check a look at D. What is the horizontal distance between point W and point Y on the model? So if you look at point W and we look at point Y on this model, that's not even a full wave. So that lets us know that it can't be between point W and point Y. The only one that's talking about increasing or decreasing the frequency of the wave is C because it's asking the horizontal distance. Remember, the closer they are together, the higher the frequency. The further they are apart, the lower the frequency. And so that means higher frequency, higher energy here, lower frequency and lower energy here. Let's move on to our next one. Number two. The diagram shows three types of electromagnetic radiation and their range of frequencies. So infrared, visible, ultraviolet, that means we're going from smallest frequency or the least amount of energy to the most amount of energy. So I'm just going to put least and I'm putting least F for frequency and then I'm putting least E for energy. And then I'm going to put greatest on this side for frequency as energy because as we go from left to right the frequency increases and that means the energy increases as well because they're directly proportional which explanation correctly uses the data in the diagram to show how infrared radiation and ultraviolet radiation are related in terms of energy now just by us knowing that ultraviolet radiation has a higher frequency and more energy than infrared we can go ahead and cross out A because it says ultraviolet radiation has less energy and we know that's not correct. And then we could also cross out C because it's saying ultraviolet radiation has less energy. Now our answer choices come become between B and D. And let's look at B. Ultraviolet radiation has more energy than infrared radiation because energy is inversely proportional. Let's break this down. This first part is actually correct because ultraviolet does have more energy than infrared radiation but if you look at the second part energy is not inversely proportional to frequency and the frequency of ultraviolet radiation is lower we know that ultraviolet radiation has a higher frequency as we stated up here it means it's carrying more energy so they cannot be inversely proportional that means as frequency goes up 
energy is going down and we know it can't be that. So we know it's not answer choice B. Now let's look at D. Ultraviolet radiation has more in, in energy than infrared radiation. That is true because energy is proportional to frequency and the frequency of ultraviolet radiation is higher. Energy is proportional. So as frequency increases, the energy increases as well. So that's why it would be D for question number two. Number three, which characteristic is the same for every color of light in a vacuum? So which one is the same? So that means we're talking about Roy G. Bill. So as we know, as we go, as we increase in energy, red has the lowest amount of energy and violet has the greatest amount of energy as we go along the electromagnetic spectrum. So we know it can't be A. And then it's talking about the period. Well, when we're dealing with energy with this one, we're not even considering the period. And then it says the frequency. We know that as we go from left to right on here, that the wavelength is longer, but then it gets shorter as we go across and it gets very short as we go over to violet. So we know it can't be frequency. So the thing that remains the same across is the speed for every color of light in a vacuum because electromagnetic spectrum light waves travel at 3.08 times 10 to the middle meters per second squared and so we know the answer choice is going to be c let's move on to number four osiris creates the following table of the energy in different electromagnetic waves measured in electron volts if you look at this one so we're looking at energy if you notice as we go down, the, the amount of energy increases as we go down. So this one right here has the least amount of energy. So I'm just going to put it least. And then as we go down to X-ray, it gets greater. So I'm putting least and then I'm putting greatest at the bottom, semifine or for X-ray. It says the chart below shows the relative wavelengths of various types of electromagnetic waves. So we're looking at these, and if you notice, as we go from right to left, the waves get shorter. That means the frequency increases and the energy increases. So I'm just going to put F going up for the frequency increases and the E going up for the energy increases. As we are over here, as we go from left to right, so I go and draw an arrow showing that us going from actually right to left. It says, which type of electromagnetic wave belongs in the cell labeled with a question mark? Explain. So we know X-ray and infrared are going to have more energy than whatever this wave is right here. So if you look at it, infrared is right here. X-ray is right here. So anything that's below or beneath infrared, which could be a microwave or a radio wave, can fit this one. So let's look at this. A says visible light. Well, we know it can't be A because A actually comes right here before visible light or comes after visible light, so it can't be A. Look at B, B says radio wave. Now it can possibly be B because the radio wave, infrared light is right here. The microwave and the radio wave are right here, so it can possibly be B. Look at C, gamma ray. A gamma ray is all the way over here, so we know it can't be C with gamma ray because it's carrying a lot of energy. And then ultraviolet wave, we know it can't be an ultraviolet wave because once again, it's carrying more energy than infrared. So what energy level is lower than infrared is actually going to be our radio wave. So that's why our answer choice would be B for that one. Question five. Lapis is studying the relationship between the energy transfer by electromagnetic waves and their wavelengths using this diagram. Now, for me taking a look at this diagram, one thing I'm going to need to be able to do is I actually need to see the wave because I'm a visual learner. So it has radio waves on this side and gamma rays on this side. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw how these waves are longer and then they get shorter as we go across. And by the time we get the gamma rays, they get very short. So now this, me seeing the wave actually helps me answer these questions. So it says, how does she describe this relationship? Select all that apply. So if I see select all that apply, that apply, it lets me know there's more than one answer. So if I look at A, as the wavelength increases, the energy decreases. So as the wavelength gets longer, the energy decreases. And if you notice, 
radio waves, microwaves, and infrared waves don't carry a lot of energy. So I know that one of the answer choices is A, because the wavelength long, is longer and the energy does decrease. Look at B, as the wavelength increases, the energy increases. Well, it can't be that because our wavelength is longer and we know a longer wavelength does not carry as much energy, so it can't be B. C, as the wavelength decreases, the energy decreases. So if you look at it, as the wavelength gets smaller, it's saying that the energy decreases. Well, that can't be true because we know that gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet rays carry a lot of energy. So it can't be C. D, gamma rays have a small wavelength and a large amount of energy. Well, they do have a very small wavelength. Even when you look at this wave right here, that means that they're carrying a lot of energy. So we know another answer choice is D. Look at E. Gamma rays have a large wavelength and a small amount of energy. Well, if you look at the wavelengths, we know that their wavelengths are very small, so that can't be true. Look at F. Radio waves have a small wavelength and a large amount of energy. Radio waves do not have a small wavelength. They have a very long wavelength, and that lets us know that they don't carry a lot of energy. So we know it can't be F. So our answer choices are A and D. Number six. The diagram shows the magnetic spectrum. Which statement best compares a gamma ray to a radio wave? If you look at a gamma ray, it has a very short wavelength. That means it has a high frequency, so high frequency, and it's carrying a lot of energy. So we know that. And then, so I'm putting wavelength. It's got a very short wavelength. So look at this. It says a gamma ray has more energy than a radio wave because it has a longer wavelength can't be true. It does not have a longer wavelength. It has a short wavelength. So can't be A. Look at B. A gamma ray has more energy than a radio wave because it has a shorter wavelength. That is true. And a higher frequency. And so if it has a shorter wavelength, we know the wavelength is small. That means it does have a higher frequency, means it's carrying a lot of energy. So let's circle that one for now. Let's look at C. A gamma ray has more energy than a radio wave because it has a, it has a shorter wavelength and a lower frequency. Well, we know if it has a shorter wavelength, it's actually going to have a higher frequency. Look at D. A gamma ray has more energy than a radio wave because it has a longer wavelength. Once again, does not have a longer wavelength. So we know our answer choices can't be B. It, it can't be A, C, or D. Our answer choice is actually B. Number seven. Regina is making observations of waves from different sources. She wants to classify the waves as either mechanical or electromagnetic. Which question will best help Regina to classify the waves? Now, what we need to know is that mechanical waves, they require a medium. So they need a medium. That means they need a solid liquid or gas to travel through. We know electromagnetic waves do not need a medium. So they don't need a medium to travel. That's the biggest difference between those two waves. So A, can the wave transfer matter? Both waves. So we know that it can't be A for this one because the waves are not transferring matter. They're transferring energy. B, can the wave transfer energy? Both waves can transfer energy, but we're not looking to see what both have in common. She's talking about classifying the waves. So she wants to find a difference between the two. So it can't be B. C, can the wave travel through a liquid? Once again, both waves can travel through liquids. But we're not looking at what both of them can do. We're only looking at what one of them can do. If we look at D, can the wave travel through a vacuum? Only one of the waves can travel through a vacuum, and that's an electromagnetic wave because it need it does not require a medium in order to travel. So our answer choice would be D. Number eight, the model shows the particles in a medium as they vibrate, passing energy along to the particles next to them in a sound wave. Which question can be answered using the model? So let's take a look at this one. So what we're looking at with this one is not how do mechanical waves create energy. We're not looking at that as a point. So we couldn't answer that from just looking at this because it does not show how the waves are created. It says, how do mechanical waves transfer energy? If you notice, with these mechanical waves, here's our compressions right here. Here's our rarefaction. So it's showing us that mechanical waves actually transfer energy through compressions 
and refractions as they enter someone's ear right here. So we can answer this question based upon the picture that we see. Look at C, how do electromagnetic waves create energy? We know it can't be C because this is not an electromagnetic wave. This is actually a mechanical wave and it is a mechanical sound wave. So we know it can't be C or D because both of them are talking about electromagnetic waves. So our answer choice would be B, how do mechanical waves transfer energy? Number nine, which question best determines if a wave is an electromagnetic or a mechanical wave so and we've discussed this one before but the biggest piece of information we need to know is that electromagnetic waves they do not require medium so i'm just going to put no medium here and then mechanical waves they do require medium so they do need a medium so i put medium right here that helps me out because now that I've identified the major difference between the two, it helps me out with our answer choice. So let's look at A. Does the wave have a crest? We know that if we're going to best determine if it's an electromagnetic or mechanical wave, then that's going to be a non-factor. That's not the best answer to choose. B, does the wave transport matter? We all know that waves don't transport matter. We know waves transport energy, so that can't be true. Does the C, does the wave transport energy? Well, both waves can't transport energy, but we're trying to find the biggest difference between the two. Now, let's look at D. Does the wave require a medium? So now when we say that, that lets us know that that's the major difference between electromagnetic and mechanical waves because mechanical waves require do not require medium and mechanical waves do. So that's going to be that's going to help us best determine whether it's an electromagnetic or mechanical wave. Look at number 10. Look at the image below. Which point on this wave is the crest? So if we notice if we always when we talk about waves and we talk about transverse waves, the crest is always at the top. So which point on this wave is the crest? Well, we know it's not B because that's not the top of the wave. We know it's not C, that's the bottom. And we know it's not D. So the only part that would show us the crest is A. Number 11, what do waves transfer? And this should be something that all of us should know. It should be our basic, most fundamental knowledge. We know that all waves transfer energy. So if you know this as just basic, fundamental, common sense knowledge, we know it can't be A. We know it can't be B. We know our answer choice is C. We know it can't be D because you have water waves, but you have sound waves. Sound waves don't carry water. They carry sound. Then you have light waves that carry light energy or they transport light energy. So our answer choice is C for that. One. Number 12, which of the following statements about electromagnetic and mechanical waves is true? Let's look. A, electromagnetic waves must travel through a medium. So let's go. Let's put this up here again. So. I like putting no medium right here because I know that's my most basic fundamental knowledge. I know medium for electromagnetic waves and medium for mechanical waves. So now when it says electromagnetic wave, waves must travel through a medium, I know that's not correct. So it can't be A. B, electromagnetic waves travel mostly through matter and mechanical waves travel mostly through a vacuum. Well, we know it can't be B because mechanical waves need a medium to travel and they cannot travel through a vacuum. C, mechanical waves must travel through a medium. This part is true, but electromagnetic waves do not require a medium. So both parts of that sentence is true. If you look at the top, once again, it matches up what we have at the top, so it's gotta be C. Look at D, mechanical waves sometimes travel through, no, there's no sometimes with mechanical waves. They never travel through a vacuum because they need a medium, a solid liquid or gas to travel through. So our answer choice is C. Number 13, Mallory creates a model of a wave as shown. Mallory wants to change her model to show a wave with a higher frequency. So she wants to show a wave with a higher frequency. I like to draw on mine. So when I see a high frequency, that means the wavelengths are gonna be very short. So high frequency and more energy, that's exactly what this wave is gonna look like. Which property of her wave model should she change? So Mallory should increase the crest of her model. So when she increased the crest, 
she's increasing the amplitude of her model so but it's asking for a higher frequency so we know that's not going to change the frequency b mallory should decrease the trough of her model by decreasing the trough of her model that's not going to impact the frequency of it c mallory should increase the amplitude of her model once again by increasing the amplitude that's not going to impact or change the frequency look at d mallory should decrease the wavelength of her model so let's go back to that question which property of her wave model should she change if she wants to show a high frequency and more energy that means she needs to make her waves come closer together the closer together her waves are the shorter the wavelength the higher the frequency and the higher the energy they are carrying so our answer choice is d 14. jesse creates a model of two waves that have the same amplitude as shown which description best compares the two waves so let's look at a wave a has greater energy because it has a lower frequency and a longer wavelength well we know if it has a lower frequency and a longer wavelength is definitely not going to have greater energy because we know a higher frequency means a shorter wavelength which is going to give us more energy look at b wave a has less energy because it has a higher frequency and a shorter wavelength wave a does have less energy but a higher frequency no because a higher frequency means that the wavelengths will be shorter so we know it's not that let's look at c wave b has less energy because it has a lower frequency and a longer wavelength wave b has less energy we know that can't be true because if you notice these wavelengths are actually shorter than wave a now let's look at d wave b has greater energy that's true that's true because it has a higher frequency that means that the wavelengths are closer together and a shorter wavelength so we just said that high frequency and shorter wavelength so we know our answer choice can't be a b or c it's going to be d 15. Mackenzie creates a transverse wave using a rope tied to a tree as shown in the diagram. Her teacher asks her to change the wave to show a greater energy transfer. What does she do? So now, look at the wavelength right now. If we were to shorten the wavelength, if we was to shorten the wavelength, that means we'll be able to create a greater energy transfer. So let's look at our answer choices. A she increases the frequency of the wave by increasing the frequency of the wave you do make the wavelength shorter and you add more energy to it so it can possibly be a so let's circle a for now b she decreases the amplitude of the wave so if she makes the wave height smaller that's not going to carry uh, greater energy transfer c she decreases the frequency of the wave so that means she makes the waves even longer if she makes the waves even longer that's not going to have a greater energy transfer so it can't be c d she increases the wavelength of the wave once again like i just showed if you increase the wavelength of the wave then you're going to decrease the frequency and decrease the amount of energy it's carrying so we know it can't be d so our answer choice is a she increases the frequency of the wave number 16 the picture show four wavelengths of sound which line shows the lowest frequency so if it has the lowest frequency that means it's going to have the longest wave so i'm looking for the line that has the longest wave so i look at w and i know a can't be w look at x compared to w y and z x has the longest wavelength that means it has the lowest frequency so that means we can go ahead and cancel out c y and dz because all of these have a shorter wavelength that means they have a higher frequency than b so our answer choice is going to be b ladies and gentlemen that's our review over waves if you liked and enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe thank you for your time we're representing fsi courses with my son and i jordan spivey and chavis spivey y'all take it easy peace